In today's episode, I'm taking a look at another inexpensive alternative to a very popular high-end niche fragrance. This one is called Vu Elegante from Paris Corner, and it's a copy of Naxos by Zerzhov, which in my opinion is the highlight of the entire Zerzhov range. So to find out what this one's all about, and whether it's a, a decent alternative to the very pricey genuine Naxos, then stay tuned to this episode of Mags Frags. Yes, hello again and welcome to this latest episode of Mags Frags, where it's the fragrance that's the star of the show. My name's Paul, and today's scent of the day is called Vu Elegante by Amir, uh, which is part of the Paris Corner brand. It's a spicy amber fragrance, and it comes in an eau de parfum concentration. I picked this particular one up from eBay and it's a little bit more pricey than the others that I've just recently spoken about and I paid £36 for this 100ml bottle size. It is a little bit more difficult to get hold of and it does seem to sell out fairly quickly at all the usual stockists that I tend to use and even Amazon had none available when I went on there to have a look uh, so it's basically a case of snapping one up when you can pick one up for a, a reasonable price and uh, compared to the original Naxos which is £205 for the same size bottle I don't think £36 is uh, still too bad value for money. Okay, so into the presentation, and the box comes in a, a white textured cardboard with gold detailing. On the front is the name of the fragrance as well as the Amir logo, but then we've also got this Amir um, head logo at the top which is embossed and has like a raised finish to it and it does give you a, a really positive first impression and the box feels and looks pretty expensive to be fair. At the top there's another Amir logo printed in a metallic gold and then on both sides there's a gold textured border. At the back is the uh, Paris Corner logo and all your uh, product information as well as the hologram sticker of authenticity. Finally down at the bottom is where you'll locate the batch code which is 81794 on this particular one. Yeah, the bottle comes in a, a frosted glass design and it resembles the shape of a Zerzhov bottle but it's not a blatant knockoff like you get with the Fragrance World uh, brand and you wouldn't instantly recognise it as a, a Naxos dupe. There's a gold coloured uh, metal plate stuck on the front featuring the name of the fragrance as well as the house and then you also get a metallic gold cap which is the, I would say the only negative really because even though it feels really well made and quite heavy it doesn't click into place and it, it comes off far too easily so don't ever try to uh, attempt to pick this one up from the cap. The atomizer is uh, pretty decent though and you get a nice short sharp blast of juice and overall the presentation is decent enough but compared with the original Zerzhov Naxos it doesn't come close and uh, Zerzhov fragrances in general are some of the best uh, fragrances when it comes to the presentation and delivering that luxury product experience. Okay, so into the note breakdown, and the top notes in this one are lemon, bergamot, lavender, and cardamom. In the heart, there's cinnamon, jasmine, honey, and cashmere. And the base notes in this are tobacco leaf, tonka beans, and vanilla. Okay, so this one opens up super bright and spicy to the point where it sometimes kind of goes straight to the back of my throat and makes me cough a little bit when I first spray it. It's a hugely powerful introduction and it's the citruses, the spices and the honey that are present right from the opening spray. It's quite herbaceous and uh, medicinal smelling for the first few minutes and it reminds me a little bit of like a, a honey scented uh, or honey flavoured cough syrup. You get a fair bit of ambery sweetness uh, that instantly comes through from that honey uh, but this is definitely less sweet than the original and the pipe tobacco note that the genuine uh, Naxos is famous for is nowhere near as prominent in this one off the top. Uh, 
But like I say, there's also a cool breezy, almost eucalyptus like a chord that runs over the top of the honey accord. And it makes for a super interesting and special opening that definitely stops you in your tracks the first time that you smell it. Uh, but I'd say that the uh, the opening of this one isn't quite as smooth, sweet or refined as the, uh, the genuine version in my opinion. And this is a bit more loud and a bit more rough around the edges. As it dries down, the honey stays the uh, most prominent note, but you'll also pick up on a, a little bit of the vanilla and the tonka beans and maybe a hint of the tobacco leaf as well. So there's a constant sweet warm undertone in the background, but yet there's always a touch of brightness from the notes like the lavender, jasmine and the cardamom. So you never quite know whether it's a sweet or more of a like a fresh fougere type scent. And it's kind of like being in the warm Mediterranean sunshine, but then getting in a large gust of cool air wafting through. The dry down is pretty accurate, accurate to the original uh, and there's no mistake in uh, what it's meant to be inspired by but I think the original is definitely blended to a slightly higher quality and if I was to smell them uh, back to back uh, blind I'd, I'd probably back myself to pick uh, the original out 10 times out of 10. I'd say this is about 85 to 90% similar to the original in the air um, but, and you definitely kind of do get a Naxos vibe from it but I think I personally prefer the uh, the perfume parlor version of this one um, because it's just not as screechy in the opening and it does have a little bit more of that prominent tobacco note just like the uh, the original Naxos does. Yeah, this one shines on a fairly cool but sunny day when it's neither too hot or too cold. And for a fragrance that's dominated by sweeter notes, it's not so sweet that you couldn't wear it in warmer temperatures. And I actually think that this version is uh, possibly a bit more versatile than the original Naxos due to the fact that the sweetness has been uh, dialed back slightly and uh, also the fresh notes and the spicy notes have just been cranked up a little bit. I don't know if it's the uh, the name of the original that tricks my mind, but every time I smell this scent profile, I do picture like a, a Mediterranean scene, and uh, it reminds me of sitting outside a villa or a gîte in the hot sun, but just catching the odd uh, cool gust off the uh, Mediterranean sea. It would be a great holiday fragrance to wear in the evenings, uh, but to be fair it's a, a really versatile scent and one that I think would work well in pretty much any situation all year round. This is actually uh, a really well balanced uh, fragrance and I think men or women could pull it off of any age and uh, you could also wear this one day or night really. Yeah, this is an EDP concentration and the performance I'd say is about average to maybe slightly above average. It's got a really good projection for the first couple of hours and will uh, always pull in a few compliments, but then it does fade quite a bit and after about three or four hours, it is then just a skin scent. The original Naxos isn't a huge performer either, uh, but it does outperform this one by a little bit, so you'll probably need to uh, reapply this once or twice throughout the day if you want to get a full day's wear out of it, or I would uh, suggest maybe taking a little 5ml spritz if you're heading on a night out and you want it to last all night. Yeah, so in summary, I'd say that if you are familiar with how Naxos smells but don't have the original at hand, uh, you would think that this was a really accurate copy of it. It's only when you compare them side by side that you can tell some subtle differences. And on the whole, this is still a really gorgeous smelling fragrance and perfect for roundabout now during the spring and early summer time. It's not the easiest to get hold of, uh, but I'd say that if you can manage to get your hands on a bottle for around about the 35 to 40 pounds mark, it's still a decent pickup. But as I mentioned earlier, I'd personally go for the 30 milliliter extract spray from the perfume parlor, which is called Greek Island, uh, if you want an almost perfect copy of Naxos. Okay, so that's about it for this latest episode and I've got just a couple more of these Middle Eastern clones to talk about and then I'm going to get back to reviewing some uh, new original designer fragrances for the next week or so. 
I'm also going to create my first ever non-fragrance related video which is going to be a, a behind the scenes look around my tiny little studio here and uh, people often ask me if I've got fragrances all the way around the room or what gear I use to uh, shoot these videos with etc. So I've decided to uh, give you a little sneak peek of my productivity uh, desk setup and show you some of the gear that I use to create and edit these videos with. So if you do enjoy uh, a bit of techie stuff or if you uh, spend hours working in front of a computer like I do uh, then make sure to tune in because I might just have a few suggestions on how to make your desk time a little bit more comfortable and productive and as always guys if you've uh, got any value from this video and you have found it useful in any way then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to also subscribe to the channel it's also great to hear your opinions your thoughts and your critiques on all of the fragrances that do feature in these reviews so don't forget to keep your dialogue coming and keep commenting in the comments section so once again thank you very much for tuning into this latest episode stay safe keep smelling fresh and i'll see you soon for another one Bye-bye for now.